What is going on, fellow poker players and YouTubers? Alton with Microgrinder Poker School here with our first video of 2018. And for our first video of this year, we're going to be doing another Leak Finder review video for one of our subscribers that submitted a video for review. So that's what we're going to do today. We're going to do specifically a Leak Finder review of sub 2 and L on PokerStar Zoom. So if you guys are interested in checking that out, stay tuned because that's what we're going to talk about today. Hey guys, for those of you that are new to our YouTube channel, I'm Alton Harden. I'm the founder of Microgrinder Poker School and this YouTube channel, and we're all about turning beginning and struggling poker players into solid winning poker players through sound poker fundamentals. So if you guys are new to the channel, please consider hitting that subscribe button down there in the bottom corner and get subscribed to our YouTube channel so you're updated for all of our latest videos that come out every week. But without further ado, let's go ahead and let's get into today's video where we're going to be doing a leak finder review for one of our subscribers. So today's leak finder review is going to be for Petros. He emailed a leak finder request to me to my email address as I listed in the instructions and I'll get to that in a minute. But he's playing 2 and L Zoom on Poker Stars and he says he's struggling with that game. Um, in this session he said he ran hot, but he had some situations where he was uncertain if he should see bet or not. And he also had some situations where he was uncertain if he should call a C bet or not. And also I guess there were some spots where he overbet and he wasn't sure if that was correct or not. So we're gonna take a look at those different spots if we get to them. But before we get to them, let's talk about how you guys can submit a request for a free leak finder review. So I'm not gonna do these all the time but when i have time i'm going to try to get to them and so far i've have a couple of them that have been submitted to me not too many it's been kind of slow with the new years um but what you can do is if you go to the main microgrinder poker school youtube channel page if you scroll down to the leak finder reviews playlist i have instructions in this video the student leak finder review 2 and l on poker stars video that i posted two weeks ago if you Go ahead and go into that video and about a minute into the video, about actually about 30 seconds into the video, I talk about how you can request a leak finder review video. So the instructions are here. Make sure you watch the video because I, I talk about some of the details and the software you can use. Um, but submit that request, email it to me to support at microgrinder.com. I'll put it in the queue. And then when I have time, hopefully I'll be able to do your free leak finder review video. Um, one thing to note, so with, with Petro's video, he didn't mute his mic and so there's background noise. So when I first tried to record this, I had some background noise. I didn't mute the volume. So I made sure this time around to mute the volume and try number two. Um, but if you guys do submit a leak finder review, video, make sure that you mute your mic so there's no background noise for me when I start to record the video. Um, but anyways, let's go ahead and let's get into this video. So he is playing Zoom. So we're going to slow it down a little bit um, just to make sure that we have ad adequate time to see what's going on with the play. A couple of things I do want to state for Petros before we get into your Leak Finder video. So in terms of see better or not or calling our bet or not, um, Look at the basic criteria and, and factors in regards to whether you should see bet or not. Um, look at concepts such as elasticity. Look at how often your opponent is folding to see bet. Look at how well their range connects with the board texture, as well as your perceived range as well. And I, that'll give you an idea is if you should see bet or not. In terms of calling a bet or not, it really just comes down to two different things. It comes down to pot odds and implied odds. If you're getting a good combination of both based upon your equity in the hand, then you can call. Um, if not, then you can't call. So it's as simple as that. I say it's as simple as that. It is pretty simple, but I mean, we need to consider our range, our opponent's range, how strong or weak it is. Look at pot odds, look at implied odds, look at equity, look at effective stack sizes and all that stuff and yada, yada, yada. Um, all that comes into play. But in general, if, if you just break it down to pot odds and implied odds, it's going to give you a good starting point. Um, over betting. Um, I guess we'll just have to take a look at at your hands. So let's go ahead and let's get into it. You did submit a 15 minute video. We're probably not going to get through, I would say maybe more than seven minutes because you guys know just as well as I, those of you that have seen my video, I tend to pause the video and like to do some lengthy explanations. So he does use a HUD. Um, it looks like he's using Hold'em Manager too. So it looks like we have VPIP, PFR, 3-bet, full versus 3-bet. Um, I believe this is raise versus steal and this is a fold raise versus steal. And we have a bit of overlap over here. So we have steel, 
see about the flop, see about turn, see about river, um, fold to, I think this is probably fold to raise after the see bet, um, fold to flop see bet, I'm assuming fold to turn see bet, fold to river see bet, WTSD, so um, when it showdown, um, FVR, I'm not sure what that is, uh, aggression factor, aggression vector percentage, um, so aggression factor flop, turn and river is what it looks like, one money, one saw flop, and it looks like blind versus blind, um, big blind versus a steel attempt, small blind versus steel attempt. So let's go ahead, let's get into it, and let's see if we can get some good hands to talk about. So kicking off the action with a pretty good hand, so we have a stack offsuit. So not a huge fan of the min raise in the small blind. Um, I think at 2NL, we can just stick to a 3X raise, so three big blinds. Now, if you are finding when you're opening in late position, specifically, let's say, um, maybe in the cutoff or specifically on the button, you could potentially make it, um, you know, 5 cents instead of 6 cents, so 2.5X. But I think in general at 2NL, I mean, if we think about uh, player tendencies at these stakes, um, and, of course, the amount of money in play. The difference between a 3x, um, a 2.5x, or a 2x raise, I don't think it's going to make a huge difference. So I would just stick to 3x, to be honest. And, and especially look at your opponent. So don't stick to just a default sizing. You know, um, I did, like I said, I did watch this before, and we had background noise. So I know uh, from the previous one, you like to 2.5x to here, you like to min raise here, and you like to min raise here. Make sure that you just don't default to that sizing. Make sure you look at your opponent. If the opponent looks like they're a fish, or if you don't know anything about them, and if the general player pool isn't that great, you can exploitatively tweak your sizing. So you can do that. Um, against a good thinking opponent, that you don't want to do that, but against a bad, fun recreational opponent, you can do that, especially um, based upon the strength of your hand. Um, so definitely think about that. And just, you know, I would just default to making it six cents um, in the small blind because when we're raising the small blind versus on the button, um, when we're raising on the button, people know we're opening a wide range and we potentially could get three bet by the small blind or the big blind. But by the time we're in the small blind, it's just a heads up situation. And so the likelihood that we get three bet declines a little bit in these more aggressive zoom games. So we got ace king. So a couple hands kicking off the action pretty well. So we do our, our 2.5x. We face a 3-bet from an opponent that we really don't have um, any reads on. We'll see what you do. Um, with the 5-9 here, make sure. So whenever you're opening on the button, make sure you look at your opponent's HUD stats. If they're folding to a very high percentage of steal attempts, if they're folding to roughly 67% or more, you could effectively open a very wide range and you should be profitable. So make sure to also look at that as well. 5.9 is definitely not going to be within our standard um, button opening range, but exploitatively we can add it in. Uh, and it looks like over here, I see 31 cents. Looks like you're probably sizing up 38 cents. Um, you're going to 4-bet. I like the 4-bet here. Definitely want to 4-bet. And we get a fold. So um, so one thing to notice, and this is kind of the downside with the zoom, is that you have to rely on HUD stats. I did watch when I recorded the video last time I saw you tagging people, but I didn't see you taking any notes. So definitely look to take notes on your opponent. So this person here, you know, take a note that he, he is three betting, a cutoff, open raise, and folding to a four bet. Um, take a look at their sizing as well. So I want you to get an idea of which specific opponents are doing that. So you can supplement your HUD stats with some actual reads. And I like that you're labeling people. Um, now, when you say fun player, uh, I noticed that you're not having, you don't have any HUD stats, so you might want to look to tweak these over time. So hopefully you are, you know, when you get HUD stats on your opponents. It looks like you really don't have anything, and maybe you're new to this player pool, or maybe there's just all an influx of new players. But definitely, you know, over time, um, 
you know, it in regards to the fun player, is he a loose passive? Is he a loose passive calling station? Um, get an idea, or is he weak tight? All that different stuff. Get an idea of all that. So queen 10 versus an under the gun open raise. I know this guy is playing just over a 50 BB stack. If we think about the gap theory, our hand isn't strong enough to call. Um, if we think that we're calling for implied odds, we probably shouldn't because his stack size is so small. If we're calling because we have positional advantage, we probably don't want to call either because we still have three players left to act after us pre-flop. That could potentially squeeze us. And in, in these fast fold poker zoom games, even at 2-0, and people tend to be more aggressive and tend to be more squeeze happy. So for all those reasons, I think this should be a fold. So you make the call, you get called from an unknown in the small blind, and we're going three ways. Um, let's see what happens with the action here. So we make the call with the queen six here. I'm not sure why we're calling here versus looks like an MP raise. A uh, queen six suited, just throw in the muck. Um, you're, number one, you're out of position, so you have positional disadvantage. Number two, you don't have the initiative. Um, and number three, in terms, again, of of looking at, if we don't know anything about our opponent, look at our standard middle position open raising range. Queen six suited is not going to be doing very well. In fact, this is probably not a hand we want to call really any open raises with um, unless it's a min raise and we have multiple callers and we're getting direct pot odds to call, but this should definitely be a full preflop. So both of these hands should be a fold. So take a look at your open raise calling ranges um, and try to tweak those and adjust those accordingly, thinking about the gap theory. So we get two checks here. We have a medium strength flush draw. Let's see what you do. Um, it looks like this one checked through on the turn. So you bet here as a pure bluff. Um, I think it's okay. I mean, I, I, you don't really have any showdown value with the queen high hand, and this person checked the flop. Uh, we would expect the four not really to improve them. Your sizing is okay. Maybe bump it up a little more to increase fold equity just to make sure you don't get called by something just fairly random. Uh, when he does call here, now the river gets even more marginal. So we do make the bet here. Understand here, I, I think this is fine, but also understand that when you do semi-bluff here against two opponents, uh, make sure you understand um, the concept of fold equity and diminishing fold equity. So when there's more people in the hand, the odds that they're both going to fold decline. So if he folds, say, 70% of the time, this person folds 70% of the time, the odds that they both fold 70% of the time is 0.7 times 0.7. So if we do 0.7 times 0.7, the odds that both of them fold is 50%. Um, and let's say that one of them folds 66% of the time, and let's say one folds 50% of the time. So the odds that both of them fold in a situation like that is only 33% of the time. So just understand that when we're facing two or more players, the odds that everybody's going to fold decreases drastically. Um, so if we're betting here with, let's say, a pure bluff, then um, we might just want to check it back. But when we have a hand like this, I think it's fine. So we bet the river here. I don't think you're going to get that many folds. It works a lot, but I think you're going to get looked up a lot by any sort of a pocket pair. You're probably going to get looked, of course, you're going to get looked up or raised by a boat. You're going to get looked up by ace high as well a lot, but you don't have really any fold equity. You took the initiative on the turn. Um, we've continued on the river, so I think it's fine. But just understand that a certain frequency of the time, this type of opponent's going to look you up. Um, at least I would. I would look you up with, you know, uh, pocket fives all the way through pocket tens and probably um, an ace high. So we make our flush on the turn. Let's take a look at your sizing. So I think now your goal here is we need to ask ourselves what's his range and how can we try to get try to get the money in on the river. So 44 cents in the pot. Let's see actually what you do with your bet sizing. So we bet 33 cents into 43. I think that's fine. Um, 
He makes the call. So now you got to ask yourself, what's his range actually look like? Of course, you block the flush draw. He could have a lot of smaller flush draws. You could have bounced, uh, potentially even had like the ace of hearts and bonked out on the river. He could have um, a pair of kings with the king X hand. So let's see what you do for your sizing. And looks like you're going to be overbet shoving here. So that's one of the things you said. You didn't know if you should overbet um, here or not. And you put that in your notes to me. So again, so what you need to consider here before you overbet here is the strength of your opponent's range. Does he have a hand that's strong enough to call an overbet here? And and what's his playing style? And so since we know nothing about him because we don't have any HUD stats, we have to go back to general player pool um, general play pool reads based upon you could do analysis in hold a manager too and just pull up some general player pool stats and i'll give you an idea of how people play in general so i don't know if people tend to play on this tighter side here in zoom or if they're going to be on the looser side in regards to calling c bets um, that's going to give you an idea and also if people like to bluff catch or not so we need to think about all these different things if you think that people like to bluff cash, they like to call a lot of C-bets, and I think overbet shoving here is fine. Um, if not, then we should probably go for sizing where we get called up by a pair of kings, potentially a pair of jacks, even a pair of eights. So I would say somewhere between maybe 40% of a pot size bet up to maybe two-thirds or three-quarters, somewhere around there to ensure that we get value from our hand. So it really depends on the player pool. Any folds? So it's some junky hands going in the muck. Jack 10 off, potentially a playable hand in the cutoff. So 6-8 offsuit, another example of a hand that we might potentially open on the button. So don't don't automatically fast fold because, um, again, I don't play in this player pool, but I noticed in 5 and L zone on Bovada and Ignition when I played that game is that people tend to overfold in the blinds. So make sure you look at their fold versus steal attempt stats. I don't know if it's on here. I, I, I see you have steal, but... Um, where is the fold versus steal? I don't know if it's on here. It doesn't look like it's on here. But if it isn't on here, you want to add it onto here. So what is their fold versus steal? And I guess it's BB full versus steal or small blind full versus steal. It looks like you had it on this opponent, but not on this opponent. So again, it comes back to general player pool dynamics. So look at how often the folding steal attempts if they're folding too often, then you can exploitatively increase your button stealing range. So we make... Um, a 2.5x with jack 10 off and the cutoff. I think it's perfectly fine. And we face a 3 bet squeeze. Yep, this is a good fold. And some hands just going in the muck. So as so, one thing to note: um, as you are looking from table to table, and you have a hand that's not playable, make sure you take your you, you start tagging opponents um, that aren't tagged, even if you're not in a hand. So, for example, uh, this player might want to tag him. Looks like you have them tagged. So again, just something to think about, rather than just automatically fast folding and trying to play in as many hands per hour as you can. Also look to start tagging players that you don't have tagged. Looks like you're sizing up a 3-bet bluff here, and you're opening on the button with 5-7 off. So I think both of them are fine. One thing to note with 3-bet bluffing at the micro stakes is that, remember, uh, your break-even point for 3-bet bluff is around 67% of the time. It needs to work just to be break-even. Also understand rake consequences, so rake is higher. So a couple things to ask yourself before you 3-bet bluff or not is, are my opponents in late position in this player pool, are they opening a wide range and folding to a lot of 3-bets? If they are, cool. Like 3-bet bluff. If they're not, then just 
fold your hand, move on to the next hand, just because rake is pretty expensive in these games. face a pretty big three bet um it's just it's a little on the big side i mean just a little under 4x and it looks like you looked at at your pop-up and i guess we can pause the video and, and see what he's doing here so i don't use hold manager so let's see what, what we have So it looks like he is raising um, with a resteal for a 3-bet. 9% overall um, from the big blind, 10%, 9% from the small blind. What's our sample size of hands? Let's let's get rid of this uh, pop-up and take a look at the sample size of hands. So one thing to make sure is that you have decent sample size of hands. You have, it looks like, I mean, it's a little granulated on my screen. looks like it's 280. So this guy is 3-betting a pretty wide range. Um this guy calls so if he doesn't call i think we should fold but now that he calls we're getting better implied odds to call so i like calling but if he folds i think we should fold our hand we have big slick over here um again i i know people tend to three bet a lot um at least what i'm seeing in this video people are three betting late position opens if they are three betting a lot just tighten up your your um, late position stealing range um, so you can just tighten it up a bit. You're going to say, well, isn't that exploitable? Yeah, yeah, it is exploitable, but it, it's a counter strategy to people through betting you a lot. Um, I would rather you tighten up your late position range than lose value with hands like ace king, hands near the top end of your range. I'd rather see you raise this to three big blinds rather than two big blinds and fold hands that you're going to get three bet with and have to fold a lot. So we're at 20 minutes. Let's go through these two hands, and we'll go ahead and end this video. So again, we hit three bet again. We have big slick. Um, looks like it. It's on you now. Um, looks like it checked around. You have a weak flush draw on the three bet pot against three opponents. So again, think about diminished fold equity. Let's see what you do. I like the four bet again, ace king. I mean, pretty standard spot. Um, so again. Um, Think about their ranges here. So is it likely that the small blind or big blind are going to still play a queen x hand? Looking at their head stats, we have a 23 17, um, a 28 18. Or is it likely that they're going to take a check call line with potentially even aces or kings, um, a stronger flush draw, or pocket fours all the way through pocket jacks? So if they're going to be taking a check call line with pocket fours through pocket jacks, um, if they're going to still play a uh, queen x hand, if they're going to take a check call line with kings and aces, then we probably don't want to see a bet here. We would rather just take a free card just because ranges are a lot stronger in three bet pots. So definitely think about that. And yeah, ace king. I mean, this guy just opened jams on the flop. You got to fold. So let's go ahead and pause the video. So we're at 22 minutes. I would like to go further. We really only got around three and a half minutes into your video, but I think I was able to point out some good things for you to work on. So, you know, um, I, I came up with some ideas on things to think about when you're playing the game, and hopefully that'll help you out. If you have any questions, um, you can email me, Petro. So you know my email address, support at microgrinder.com. So you can email me or you can post a comment down below in the video. Hopefully you got some value out of this free Leak Finder review video. Um, again, it was only about three and a half minutes, but it was Zoom. So we did get to see a lot of hands in three and a half minutes. And, um, you know, three minutes, three and a half minutes to play on Zoom was at least for me i saw a lot of different hands um, and luckily you got a lot of playable hands as well so thanks for submitting this video um, i enjoyed creating this free league finder review video for you and like i said any questions just let me know if you guys like today's video please give it a thumbs up if you're not subscribed to my youtube channel please consider subscribing clicking that subscribe button down there in the bottom corner and also if you guys like all this free poker training content that i put out on our YouTube channel, please consider checking out our Patreon page down below in the description because you guys can help support this channel for as little as a couple bucks per month. And also, I give some pretty awesome rewards for our Patreon supporters. So anyways, guys, thanks for watching. Hope you have an 
awesome day. Good luck at the tables, and I'll see you guys in about a week at our next video. Take care.